Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I hope you're all very well and tickety boo. So, welcome to a series here, which is called Wines of the World. That's the D3 section for the diploma. That's the level four for the WSET. It's on central Italy. We are looking at series three of six in central Italy on Marche, and it's part one here on the history, introduction, and wine business. So here you are. We've already covered Toscana and the Appalachians of Toscana. It's the big part of central Italy. Marche is a seven-part series, so it's a bit of a thriller. We're going through quite a bit uh, here on part one, which is this video on history and introduction and wine business, plus part two, the next video, are available as free content through my channel, of course, here, Wine with Jimmy. Parts three through to seven, that's grape varieties and appellations, are only available on my e-learning portal. That's over at winewithjimmy.com. Okay, so let's rock and roll. The first thing we really need to know is where Marque is located. And really, it is directly to the east of Tuscany, but right on the east coast of Italy. So you see it's highlighted there. This is central Italy, it extends from the Adriatic Sea, which is this part of the Mediterranean, the shallower part of the Mediterranean, to the Apennines, which is the mountain range in the middle of the spine of Italy. It's bordered, not hugely, but it is bordered in the north by Emilia Romana and the Romana section, and also Tuscany to the west, very briefly, uh, Umbria, which is what we'll be looking at on a future series, and Abruzzo to the south, and a tiny smidgen of Lazio, in fact, as well, just here. Okay, so that's its location. Hopefully that's all understandable. What about a bit of history here? I'm going to give you a few slides on history. Now, the first thing is the, uh, the Piceni tribe. Um, this is a tribe that predates Romans, um, around the same time as the Etruscans, uh, and settling here around 1000 BC. Now, according to legend, they were guided to the region by a woodpecker. And that's the emblem that you have here. There's the M, as you can see. This is normally a green emblem, by the way. But there's the M for Marque, and there is the woodpecker, which is leading the M, leading the Piceni tribe. Um, next up, the Greek influence here. So one of the key cities, which is a map for it just here, which has a lovely port, uh, is Ancona, originally called Ancon, and that was the city founded by the Greeks from Syracuse in the 5th century. Now, the Sinones, who are a tribe from the Gallic areas to the north, pushed the Piceni south in the 4th BC, but were defeated as a part of a formidable coalition between the Samnites, the Etruscans, the Umbrians, and then the Sononi Gauls at the Battle of Sentinum. And that was a part of the Third Samnite War. And that's because the Piceni tribe allied with the Romans. It eventually was absorbed into the Roman Empire. It was known by the Romans as the Picenum territory. So its name has always been sort of kept quite local to that. So uh, Romans, of course, dominated here. The Roman Empire collapses in the 5th century and multiple invasions followed that fall of the Western Roman Empire. And that includes the Gothic Wars, the Lombard influence, and then Charlemagne bringing a bit more stability here. Um, with the stability of Charlemagne and uh, our, um, our Frankish influence, the region was uh, subsequently organized into three administrative districts. And these were called marches or marques, as we say today. So this is Marca di Ancona, which of course is Ancona, Marca di Camarino and Marca di Fermo. Uh, and you'll see them here. It's difficult. Uh, I'm trying to sort of focus, but you'll see that you have... Um, uh, they're, they're kind of you see Ancona quite clearly here, which is this one, and Marca de Fermo down in the south, and the one towards the northern section is the um, Camarino. So three divisions, three mar marches or marques. 
it was ruled by the Papal States until the Kingdom of Italy. And that brings me to the next one, because there's quite a famous battle here. The Battle of Castelfildardo, which you'll see just here, which was the 18th of September, 1860, was the most significant battle during the, pre, the very brief Piemontese invasions of the Papal States. It split the Papal Field Army in half, uh, and uh, in fact, they splintered away into very, you know, several weak fragments. Uh, so it was a real decisive uh, battle. The result of the battle meant that the, um, the marches and Umbria entered into the Kingdom of Italy and the extent of the Papal States was reduced to the area which is today known as Lazio. And of course, this is really the, um, the time of founding the unification of Italy. If you do have any comments or questions or concerns, of course, you can make yourself heard. And you can do so by commenting on this video below. Make sure you click like because that helps me. Make sure you click subscribe because that helps you with our weekly updates. And there has been two updates every week for since the inception of Wine with Jimmy back in 2020. Now, um, nice bit of history there, but what does it mean to us? One thing we must really identify with Marque is it doesn't have any really significant urban centres. There are places like Urbino, uh, there is Ascoli Piceno, um, we've got Ancona, which are all nice small cities, uh, but no real big significant players, not like a Pisa or Livorno or Arezzo or Florence or Siena, you know, none of those big names. Um, so it's not an area which is exceptionally well known um, for exporting because of the lack of urban centres. Um, and therefore, a lot of its wines have stayed fairly quite rural and not really been exported so well. It's always had to compete with the north, which is above it, and then Tuscany, which is to the west, which are really really powerhouses. Uh, so it's always been in the shadows uh, for that. Now the wine business. Now it produces mainly red wines from blends of multiple Chiano and Sangioveses and then white wines from Verdicchio. You've got multiple Chiano on the left, Sangiovese in the middle and of course Verdicchio on the right hand side. The two black grapes now produce three times as much wine made from Verdicchio and that used to be, Fadicchio used to be the region's main variety, but of course, with the success of Sangiovese and also the, um, the older success of Multiple Giano, those two varieties have become more prominent. Most of the wines, both white and red, are inexpensive to mid-priced in Marche, but there are, of course, some reserver expressions which are much more um, premium in, in, in example. Um, a governing body here, so the Instituto Marchigiano di Tutele di Vini is a consortium dedicated to the promotion of the wines from the region. It re represents about 75% of the region, uh, and most of the wine of the Marche is sold in Italy, but one third by value of wine is, is produced is exported. The US, uh, Canada, China and Japan are the leading export markets. And in the past, inexpensive Verdicchio sold very well both in Italy and export markets, but has had competition from the likes of Pinot Grigio and other styles, Suaves, um, things like uh, Vernaccia, etc. The current challenge for its producers is to build an international reputation for quality rather than quantity, but difficult because of the production numbers that have come from here. Uh, and significant private companies include the like Suvamana Omani Ronchi, which is what you see on the left hand side just here, 70% exports. Fazi Badalia, which is this um, green amphora shaped bottle, an important one because they first produced this green amphora shaped bottle in 1953. And this iconic bottle became very well known. It's inspired by Etruscan amphora, immediately recognizable, very famous, and it's become the symbol of Verdicchio de Castelli de Jesi today, almost a synonym for Verdicchio itself. And you'll see that there's Moncaro on the right hand side here, another famous producer. Uh, they, um, they are a big cooperative 
you can see that they've also got an emulation of the shape of the uh, M4, you can see here. And that's quite typical across many uh, affordable expressions of uh, Fedicchio, for example, uh, as well. So quite famous names. There are other famous wine producing styles as well. We will talk about Rosso Piqueno. We'll talk about uh, um, Rosso Canero as well, uh, Fedica de Metallica. We're going to go through quite a lot in this, uh, in this area. So please do join me for all of that information. Part two is coming up, a slightly smaller video uh, on climate and grape growing. So that's part two. That's another freebie in the world of YouTube. But anything after that video will be only available to my e-learning uh, subscribers over at winewithjimmy.com. Please do visit and check it out because you will not be disappointed with the amount of, of real good information you can find to help you with your studies. Um, any comments or questions or concerns, of course, please do get in touch. You can do so by emailing info at winewithjimmy.com or, of course, utilizing the social media you see at the bottom of every slide. And if you do find yourself in the rolling green hills of the United Kingdom, old blighty in England, please come and see me at one of my establishments in London for a class, a glass, or probably more likely a bottle. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>